It's different for different people and it can be very subtle or it can be quite strong. It's just the life force. It's like a bubble of oxygen in my life. As revelation from God. To explain it, it's difficult. But it's absolutely personal and individual. So everyone's incredibly spiritual in, in, in Subud. It's Subud. Whether or not you're in Subud. Subud, a word that's been ingrained on my mind for the past month. I found the word like most people. I stumbled across it. And what I discovered was so compelling, I knew I had to find out more. So here I find myself driving to Hefkut Valley to visit Subud House. Although Noah's Ark would probably have been better than my Honda Civic. It was the start of my journey to find Subud. If you talk to 50 different Subud people, you'll get a slightly different story because it's an individual experience. The word Subud is a, is a constri constriction or contraction of three Sanskrit words, Susila, Buddhi and Dharma, taken together, represent the possibility to surrender to the power of God within. I think Subud brings you awareness and light and a different point of view. So there's no gurus, there's no teachers, there's no dogma, there's no sort of instruction list that you have to follow to try and achieve that. Basically you, you open yourself up to that divine power that is partly within you. You could call it God, you could call it um, Allah or whatever. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I usually take my new age spiritual practices with a grain of salt. So I turn to the journalist's first port of call, Google, and lo and behold, up popped cult watch. A cult is a religion that we don't like. I mean, if I, if I like you, you've got a religion. If I don't like you, you've got a cult. And if I don't really like you at all, you've got superstition or magic, or you're a pagan or a heathen. Groups that are cults do not define themselves as cults. So it's always an outsider term. You know, when you have a cult, you've got to have some guy standing up the front, waving a Bible around, sleeping with all the women and keeping all the money. And we just don't have that. And I think we need to be aware too that groups such as Cult Watch are made up of evangelical Christians who are very clear to draw the line between what they see as true and false forms of Christianity and other religions. Okay, it's not a cult, it's not a sect, it's not a pagan religion, so where did it come from and what is it? It's better than all that. <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't think there is a word to say what it is. It's so good. It started in Indonesia in the 30s with uh, one man started it, a picture of him behind us here. Bapak, that's a short name, Muhammad Suwu Sumahari Wajoyo. He had an experience which at first was incomprehensible. So let's say it was an involuntary experience. It was something which just happened. And that experience has been given the name the Latihan Kezuan. When you have this Latihan, you receive this force, and this is the force of life, this is God, this is a contact with something. If you sort of said, okay, everybody just pray in your own way, it would might be vaguely like that. You just stand and wait and surrender, and, and then you, the, you feel moved. Well, there's a bunch of guys sitting around the edges of a room. To be honest, I thought the fact that men and women practiced Latihan separately was a bit suspect. But then it was explained to me that the Latihan is all about being in a state of complete unselfconsciousness. It has nothing to do with any sort of weird gender stuff. And one of the experienced members just stands up and everybody just quietly begins. There'll be a whole lot of guys moving around a space. Singing, some people will be dancing around, somebody will be sitting on the floor, some people moving, people lying on the floor, sleeping, or really different ways of receiving. It's whatever sort of comes out, and the idea is to, is to sort of let whatever comes out come out. Everything, I mean, they cannot fly or whatever, but... You feel it settle. Suddenly you're conscious of the cars going by, you hear, hear cars, you hear birds singing, you suddenly, oh, there's the world, which you've been kind of suspended and relieved from for about half an hour, and just feeling something which is, is very serene. If you don't want 
to follow what you receive, you can always just not follow what you receive. And if you receive to run and you just don't want to run, you can just not do it. It is spiritual, it is spirituality, but it is intensely practical for, um, for daily living. After spending time with these people, I still didn't know if all there was to Sabud was practicing the Latihan. After all, if they do the Latihan twice a week, what happens on the other five days? I was hooning along Summit Road on a, a 750cc Honda and uh, coming up to a sharp bend. And I, and I looked at my hands and my, I could feel the laddie hand and my hands were just going ving, 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 ving. And I was downshifting from fantastic high speed downshifts from fifth down to, down to first. And as I, as I came through the corner, there was a big long Land Rover sideways in the middle of the road, blocking the road. So something in me sensed and I could feel it and react to it even involuntarily. So the laddie hen is something that you can say, oh yes, I want this now. I, wa I want to receive and feel this now. But it's also something that go, boom, just comes up by itself. I learned a lot from Subud House and the community who meet there. Once again, I can't help my mind from wandering. For people seeking another path, Sabud and the Latihan seemed an ideal spiritual connection. I mean, it's about free will and individuality, and the personal relationship one has with one's God. And you'd be amazed where you'd find it in our society. I've done my research on Sabud, and you've got to look hard. If it's so good, why doesn't everybody know about it? You told me the other day, I think, that there was 10,000 people in Sabud worldwide. Gosh, it's not very many. There's no proselytizing. There's no going out on the street corners and saying, come and join Subud. We are the way. We are the only way. And so Subud members have found it quite difficult. So where do you place yourself in the continuum between being like that and saying absolutely zilch? We feel that we have something which is extraordinarily valuable. At the same time, as you have now seen, we are all marvelously inarticulate when it comes to trying to express it to someone. So we have this thing which seems priceless and useful and yet really we just have to wait till people come to us. So what really is the journey? I'm not quite sure what the destination is. The destination, I suppose, if you try and approach it mentally, is eternal happiness, eternal joy.